Hello, I'm Graham, and I hope everyone's having a great day. And welcome to part four of this video tutorial series where I'm looking at the Canon M50 camera for new users. Now, in today's video, we're going to look at two elements which will also affect the final outcome of your JPEG image. One is the picture styles, and the second one is the white balance control. Now, if you shoot in RAW mode, these really don't have any effect on your final image because you're going to post process those to your taste. But if you're a new user and shooting in JPEGs, these two components will affect the outcome of your image, and those are what I want to explain today. Now, the picture styles allow you to customize the way the camera processes your raw image in camera to give you the JPEG, so you can actually change things like sharpness, saturation, contrast. Picture styles can be further divided into vivid and natural or different types of photo style to create images that you might want to conceive. Now, the white balance, uh, we normally use automatic white balance, and in most cases that gives you a good effect. But there are some situations where either your subject colour or your background colour can influence the way the camera processes the image and actually give you false colours. So, we'll be looking at how to set up a manual white balance in this video, so you can ensure that you're going to get correct uh, colours in your final image. So, let me set the camera up so I can record the back of the camera so we can see what we're doing, and we'll proceed with the video. So let's begin by looking at the picture styles that this camera provides and we access picture styles by pressing the menu button and you notice on page 4 of the setup menu picture style is the last entry on that screen. So with the picture style highlighted uh, press set and that brings you into a sub menu with all the options that Canon have provided for giving you some picture elements. Remember these picture styles only work with the JPEG and with your movie mode so they don't affect the raw option. So you can see the menu starts with auto and the camera there will try and determine the scene type that you're taking and set an appropriate picture style. To a large degree that will work, but it's better if you work with one of the other modes and I'll describe how they work as we go through this video. Now you can see we've got a set of numbers pertaining to the legends across the top of the screen. So for example, here in the standard picture style, we've got 424000 and they refer to the sharpening, the fineness of that sharpening control, the threshold of it, and they equate to something like the strength, the radius, and the masking if you're using Lightroom or Photoshop. Then we've got contrast, saturation, and color tone. Now the color tone adjusts the uh, color of the image on the magenta green axis, so that allows you to change the illumination. If your auto white balance isn't giving you the correct illumination, you can actually change the tone to give you a magenta green axis shift. So you've got the other options here, portrait, landscape, fine detail, neutral, and if you use the cursor key, you can actually scroll down and you can see we've got faithful and monochrome, and then we've got three user-defined options, and you can define your own parameters. So let's start with the standard, and we'll leave the default value set as 424000, and I'm going to take the first shot with the camera to give you an idea of the image that we're capturing. So that is the standard picture style. Let's look at portrait, which gives a slightly different uh, sharpening element to it. And it, behind the scenes will change some other parameters, which Canon have decided to change for that portrait mode. Now the portrait mode does enhance the red, so if you've got a scene with red, such as uh, a landscape with uh, red uh, buildings in it, you can enhance the reds by using this particular profile. Now let's take a look at the next one which is the landscape itself and landscape has a slightly enhanced sharpening and it boosts the blues and the green so we should see a shift in blues and greens in the image produced with this picture style. Fine detail lowers the uh, fineness control and it lowers the threshold so the more of the image is sharpened in this particular detail. So let's take one with fine detail we should see a slightly enhanced sharpening in that picture. Next one is neutral and as the name suggests there is little sharpening and the whole image is of a neutral component so we don't have too much contrast or we don't have too much saturation in this particular image. Again Faithful Luxazoid has the same values but behind the scenes this, the Faithful is 
reducing again the amount of contrast and saturation so the image is quite flat and if you're shooting video this might be one of the good options to use as it gives you a much wider dynamic range and you can push your shadows or you can reduce your highlights a little bit more when you post process your video monochrome does exactly as it suggests again it's got the same parameters as the standard now if I go back into that option we use info you can see we've got changes that we can make to mono which are the filter effect so you can see we've got um, additional filters we can apply so if you're coming from the black and white film era you'll recognize the yellow and orange provide you a, an intense sky uh, with uh, enhanced blues red for sunsets and green uh, to lighten grass so you can actually see the effects that you've got on this now if you wanted to change the way that this uh, operates if you wanted to change say the standard profile and add a little extra sharpening and a little extra contrast then if you use the info button that allows you to go into changing the parameters so we've got under the sharpening control strength fineness and threshold the strength as it suggests the more you apply the more the sharpening effect will take place fineness is like the radius control in your Lightroom or Photoshop the higher the radius the more of the pixels that are selected for sharpening are included and the threshold is like the masking control the higher the mask the less of the image is affected the lower the mask the more of the image is affected so if I wanted to increase the sharpening then I could uh, select the strength and I could boost that to 7 and if I wanted to increase the contrast Let's go down to contrast and again press set and let's increase the contrast to all the way up as well so now I've selected standard which has now got our adjustments so let's take that picture and we should see we've got some enhanced sharpness and more contrast now if I was entirely happy with the profile that I've just set up and I want to keep that as an option for later photographs I could save this in one of the three default positions so we'll press it down to use define one so we've got user define one press the info button and that brings you up this secondary menu and you can see that I've got the picture style which is auto if we press set we can actually change this to the standard node the one we just set up so we press set so by selecting standard it's brought through the default options for standard and I can now put those in there I like the uh, strength to be 7 and I wanted my contrast to be all the way to the right so there I can save that as that standard so you can now see user define one has got the standard profile with our adjustments we can actually then go back to our standard profile and change that back to its defaults a quick way of setting the defaults is to use the default set so we've changed our sharpening parameter of the standard to bring that back to normal press default set select ok and that will bring the standard back to the default of the camera so those are the picture styles and you use those to change your JPEG or movie file parameters to give you the look that you want in your particular image or your video but let's now look at white balance and how white balance can affect the image now normally the camera will use what's called auto white balance or AWB and it does a very good job in analyzing the scene and trying to harmonize all those colors to give you a neutral look so there's no particular bias to any color of the spectrum but under some circumstances where your subject or your background may have a very strong color hue then this could fool the white balance metering and you could end up with colors of a complementary nature so it's better under those circumstances to use what's called a preset or you set your own manual operating point so let's just cursor up to the white balance and if you notice when you press menu set on that brought up another sub menu which has got AWB which they've got the sunshine shade cloudy tungsten 
This one is fluorescent, so that's the old um, daylight fluorescent tube, which usually has a green tint to it. You've got the flash white balance control, which the camera will automatically set if you've got the flash pop-up. You've got a custom white balance, and we've got a Kelvin scale. But here today we've got a partly cloudy situation, so if I wanted to keep the images, if I was shooting a set of images and I wanted them all to have the same colour tone, providing the lighting doesn't change, then I can use one of the presets. And I could select the shade option. So if I select shade, it gives me a colour temperature of around about 7000 degrees Kelvin. So if I press set to lock that in place, come back out to the shooting menu, we'll take that picture. So that is the one shot with our shade preset. Tungsten will give you a very, very cold light because we're setting an operating point which is below our current daylight temperature. So if our daylight, like today, is around about 5000 degrees Kelvin, if we set a Kelvin degree which is lower than our operating point, it will appear colder. So this one will look intensely blue. So let's set that in. Have a look at the scene and you can actually see here on the back of the LCD that the scene looks blue. So let me take that picture and you can see it in the video. So that is with a Kelvin set of 3200 degrees. So if I actually go over to the Kelvin scale and you can actually dial in a colour temperature. So if I use the front control ring now I can change that temperature. So if I change it to uh, say 5,000 degrees, which is um, probably where we're at today. Press set to lock that in place. We take that picture, it looks quite neutral. Now if I go back in, and we change the Kelvin temperature to one which is higher than our current temperature, it will appear yellow-red. And if I change it to a value which is lower than our current daylight temperature, it will appear blue. So if I wanted to make this image look really warm, I could actually change this Kelvin to something like, say, 900 degrees. So that's 9000 degrees Kelvin, press set. You notice the picture will look intensely warm when we take that shot. So that's how to set the presets to one of the ambient lighting conditions that you're actually shooting under. Now what I want to do now is to do a manual white balance. And the manual white balance allows us to use a grey card and photograph that under the prevalent lighting conditions and then use a camera to actually set the operating point from that. So I'm going to set the camera up to show you how to do that. So here's how we would set a manual white balance operating point on the Canon M50 or any of the Canon series cameras actually. Now this card is produced by Menon and it's an 18% neutral grey so I can actually use this for both white balance and exposure determination if I needed to. Now some people recommend that you use a white sheet of paper but sometimes you'll find that in bright daylight the camera can't change the operating point and you get a warning that the scene is too bright. So it's better to use either a 9% reflectance or the 18% reflectance cards that are available for setting white balance. Now the idea is that you fill the viewfinder with the grey card and take a picture of it and then you use the camera to set the operating point. So what I'm going to do is go back behind the camera, frame this into the viewfinder and then we'll take a picture of it and then we set this as an operating point. So you can see I'm positioning the card. It's actually in the same light as what I'm shooting. So I'm trying to shoot the landscape which has got sunlight on it. So here I've got my card and it's in sunlight. So I'm going to record the same color temperature. Providing the card fills the screen, if I take a picture, um, sometimes you might need to use manual focus so that the camera will take a picture if you've not got any clearly defined areas on that card. So the camera is now taking a picture of the grey card and what I need to do now is to go into the set procedure. So if I go into menu and I go to custom white balance and press set, it will look at the previous image you've shot and su uh, suggest that this is okay for setting a white balance. So we know this is good, we press the set 
and it says do you want to use this image for your custom white balance and we will say yes and now it says set the white balance to custom white balance so we have to change our white balance from auto white balance to the custom white balance which is this symbol here once we press that the camera will now take that picture with the white balance that was just set using that grey card and it's as simple as that if you wanted to change the operating point because you felt the scene still needed a little bit of extra warmth or you wanted to cool it down you can use the facility in the control by going to the white balance brackets and white balance shift now when you press set you'll see that it brings up an axis between blue and yellow magenta and green and you can move the operating point anywhere between the axis so I'll go up blue or yellow or I can go magenta or I can go green or you can actually move it into any of the quadrants so if I wanted this scene to be slightly warmer first of all I could actually go along the yellow axis and make it appear slightly yellower which would be warmer and if I bring it down into the magenta quadrant when I mix yellow and magenta I get red so this is adding some red to the image so you can actually warm up your image by adding a little bit of red so again if you're using sunsets you might want to bring this point towards the corner which is adding a little bit more yellow and a little bit more magenta to give you a red image so I don't want to go to red so I just want to warm it up a little bit so I'm going to go a little bit to the uh, magenta axis but more to the bl uh, yellow axis set that in operation and now let's take that picture and this should be significantly warmer than we shot with our white balance set with the card so that's how you would set a custom white balance and how to fine tune it if you're not happy with the image that you're getting well that's it for this short video on the picture styles and white balance i hope you find that useful in the next video we'll be looking at shooting video with the camera and i'll be looking at shooting in the automatic mode and then how to set the, up the camera in the full manual mode to have better control on how your videos will look so i look forward to bringing you that in the next video if you're a new viewer and not already subscribed to the channel please do click that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you'll be notified when i upload the next video in this series also check out my photographic blog i'll put a link to that in the video description below it's more than a newsletter it's a technical publication in many respects and that goes out to just over 2,900 people now every three weeks so if you've not already subscribed please do so so as usual thanks very much for watching Please do take care and I hope to see you all in the next one. Goodbye for now.